Hi, my name is Michael Adusi. I'm the oboe professor at Tennessee Tech. And uh, today I would like to give you some tips and advice for starting the oboe for the first time. So we'll have a series of videos. In this one, I just want to talk to you about taking care of the instrument, how you should hold it, and that sort of thing. And then a uh, second video will be about breathing and embouchure, what you do with your mouth. And then the third video will be about articulation. Uh, I have my email address here on the board behind me. And uh, from time to time, I'll put links and references in the space above my head here. And uh, the most important thing is please feel free to contact me at any time if I can help you with the oboe. So let's get started. So to put the oboe together, mainly you have to be careful about the keys that go across the different joints. So I would start by putting the bell onto the bottom joint. And if you notice, there's this little bridge key and you want to make sure that you don't jam the two bridge keys together. So put, put the instrument together where the bridge keys are not touching. So I actually put the bell on upside down with the key on the back. Now, if you have a uh, beginner model oboe, you probably don't have as much going on down here, but you still need to be careful. Uh, put it on, push it together. You can brace it on your chest or on your knee if you need to, and then rotate until the two bridge keys are perfectly lined up. So again, your starter oboe will, instead of having this load, this key here, will have two holes in the bell, so you won't have to worry, uh, except that you'll want the holes to be on the sides, because those are for low B flat. You actually close those holes with your knee. Okay, once you have the bell on, then you take the top joint, and I hold it in my left hand, and again, there are two bridge keys that you don't want to cram them together or they get bent. So put the top joint on, slightly offset, push it together all the way, and then rotate, I'll show you, rotate it until the bridge keys are perfectly lined up on your right side when you're holding the instrument. So this side right here. Okay, we don't want them to bend. The other side doesn't have to touch perfectly, but this one needs to be centered on the right side of the oboe. Now, if you have a wooden instrument, you need to warm it up uh, slowly before you play, and I just hold it in my hands. Uh, you can put it under your arm. Uh, don't take a cold oboe and start blowing hot air into it. You can cause it to crack. Um, even your plastic oboe, you should warm it up because if the, if the instrument is cold, it's been sitting in your locker all night, and you're blowing hot air into it, it's going to increase the amount of condensation and moisture inside, and you're going to get water in your keys. So. I just hold it with my two hands like this. It's really the top part that's the issue because that's where your hottest air is coming in. And just hold it until it's, the chill is off of the instrument. And then you can go ahead and play. Okay, so that's how we put the instrument together. How we hold it, right hand on the bottom, left hand on top, and the thumb rest is going to go at the base of your thumbnail. So not, not back here, not at the tip, of your thumb, but right at the very base of your thumbnail, like that. And then you can find the six natural finger holes, the keys that you're going to press, left hand, same. Now I want you to imagine that you're holding a golf ball or a racket ball in the palm of your hand and balancing it against the oboe. So try not to cram your hands in close to the keys. Don't feel like you have to come out way out from the side. But if you put your hand down at your side it form, and then look at it, it forms a natural C shape, and that's what we would like. So when we play the oboe, you're not going to try and use the very tip of your finger in an arched way. That's really inefficient and actually slippery too. So we're going to use the pad of your fingertip and just a very natural hand position. We're not going to lean up or down. Try to imagine that you're coming to the oboe from the side. Now, if you are switching from another woodwind, if you're switching from the clarinet, uh, clarinets tend to hold the instrument very close to their body. On the oboe, we're going to hold it out at like a 40 degree angle or something like that. So I'll turn to the side. We don't point with the oboe. Don't crush it in towards your stomach. Just hold it out. If you're sitting down, which many of you will be doing in your band, all of you, uh, I like to aim the oboe at my, the, the very edge of my knee, and my kneecap. So don't have it up in the air and um, higher than that. If it's not aiming at your kneecap, then you've got it tucked in too close to your body. So just kind of an 
a 45, 40, 35 degree angle. You don't need to actually measure it. One finger exercise for you, you're not going to be playing this note right away if you're just starting out. Um, but this little key here, the first finger key, has a plate on it, and that's called the half hole. So normally, we close the hole. Some notes on the oboe are going to require you to roll your finger down and open that plate. The key itself is still shut, but you're allowing air to leak out of the, the hole in the top here. So this is called the half hole. Uh, there are only three notes that require it in the normal range of the oboe. C sharp in the middle of the treble clef staff, D in the middle of the staff, and E flat in the middle of the staff. So you should start right now practicing on a pencil. We want to get your left hand index finger to move independently. So hold like it's a tiny oboe and practice with the middle knuckle of your left index finger. Push that knuckle down to the ground while you pinch the pencil between your thumb and your index finger. It's going to look like this. So you see how I'm doing that without moving my wrist? So I'm not doing this. And I'm doing it without moving the other fingers of my hand. You know, practice this until you can do it independently. And then, once you're feeling comfortable with the pencil, you want to do it on the oboe. Again, we're pinching between the thumb and the first finger. Roll downward. So there's several incorrect ways to operate the half hole. The correct thing to do is to have your finger live on the top of the key and vent it downward and then relax it back up. You don't use it most of the time, so don't let your finger stay down here and then you're always having to work to close it. Keep it up here. We also don't slide back and forth and we don't hop okay, for a variety of reasons. So you want to practice now, even though you aren't playing that note in band, uh, with really good half hole technique. You're going to want a fingering chart, and I would actually recommend that you buy the Rubank Elementary Method for Oboe. Uh, your band will probably be using another book, and that's fine. The Rubank ha has a really good fingering chart in the front, so I'll put that uh, information up above here. Okay, the rest of your posture, we've talked about where to put your hands, the angle of the instrument, um, a couple of other concerns. Keep your shoulders down. We tend to sometimes play like this, that adds a lot of tension and you'll get sore. So shoulders are always down. And then your elbows should just be in a normal, neutral position. You don't need to tuck them into your sides and you don't need to flap them out like wings. So if I stand like this, it's pretty calm. We want, uh, I want the oboe to be as simple as possible, so don't do anything that makes you uncomfortable. Okay, the last thing for this video is I'd like to talk to you about reeds very quickly. The reed is the most important part of your instrument and actually also the most delicate, so you need to be very careful with it. Don't wave it around like I'm doing. Um, when you buy a reed, it's going to come in some kind of small plastic container, either with a lid like this or it's going to be a tube that you, you stick the reed in and it's got a cap on it. That's for mailing only. That's actually the worst place to store your reed because as you, you've already dropped it, as you take it in and out, uh, you are going to be breaking the tip and then also they have a very airtight seal and so your reed is going to start to mold because when you put it away it's not dry. And so the first thing you're going to want to do is get yourself a reed case and these can be very expensive, they don't have to be. It needs to hold the, obo the reed securely. Here's an example of a small one. This is not, not my favorite because there's no ventilation. This one has little pegs that they're spring loaded and, and if you're going to have those are called mandrels. If you're going to have a mandrel style reed case, you need to be careful that they don't just flop because if you can put your reed in here and shake it and you hear it rattling back and forth, that's going to be breaking the tip of your reed. So your reed, when you're not using it, needs to be in a case, not in the shipping container that it came in. You probably want to start with a small one so that you can leave it inside your oboe and you don't accidentally forget it. Most, most beginner oboes don't have a zipper pocket or anything. You just have to put it inside. Okay, the reed, in order to play it, you're going to need to soak it in water, not in your mouth. So if you're switching from clarinet or saxophone to oboe, you're used to putting the reed in your mouth. Um, now, this is a double reed. 
and it's hollow, there's inside space. When you're soaking it in your mouth, you're only wetting the outside. And also, the body temperature is very warm, and it's going to cause the reed to expand, and that makes it hard. Okay, so what you need is a small film canister or a pill bottle that you wash out really well. Uh, this one is magnetic. It's designed to clip onto my stand. And you're going to fill it with water. You want room temperature water, not super cold, not super hot. Both of those things make the reed harder to play on. And um, you want to have enough water in there that it covers half of the thread. So your reed has a cork part on the bottom. That's what goes into the oboe. A cane part on top. That's what vibrates, and then string in the middle that's holding the cane onto the, the cork part. And there's actually metal on the inside there. This is that bottom part's called the staple. Um, so, have enough water in your film canister to go about halfway up the thread. It doesn't actually matter. You could fill it up to here. It doesn't hurt the cork. It just makes it slippery. But you don't want to be soaking it in just a tiny, tiny bit of water. You want to make sure all of the cane is getting wet. With a brand new reed, you want to soak it for maybe only 30 seconds. If you over soak your reed, again, it swells up and it gets too hard to play. You can't play on a dry reed, they just won't vibrate. As your reed gets older, you're going to feel like it needs to be in the water more and more, and that's a sign to you that you should probably think about buying a new reed. Uh, if you get to the point where you have to soak your reed for like 10 minutes and it still doesn't feel ready to play, your reed is worn out. And most of us tend to use the reeds a lot longer than we should because they get softer and softer and then they feel more comfortable. But you know, you could practice an hour or two hours on a really, really soft, worn out reed and you won't actually get any stronger. So then when you buy a new reed, it's super hard and you don't like it. So if you replace your reeds more often, I would say every two or three weeks, assuming you don't break them, um, then you won't lose so much strength. So I've had students who try and play on a, a worn out reed for two months, three months, and they lose all their muscle strength, and then it's really hard for them to adapt to a new reed. So if you are able, trying to rotate those through a little faster would be good. Now, you have been playing, and it's time to put your instrument away, so we need to talk about swabbing it out. All right, there are two kinds of swabs, silk and everything else. So I recommend for you a silk double-ended swab. That means, double-ended means it has, they have a weight that you drop through the oboe, and then double-ended means there's a tail on the end, so if it gets stuck you can pull it back out. Uh, silk swabs are designed to be pulled through the entire instrument, and I'll, I'll put some information above about what I recommend. So you're going to hold your oboe upside down, drop the weight into the bell, make sure that you check it that there are no knots in the swab or it'll get stuck. And it just runs through, it'll come out the bottom, and then slowly pull it all the way through. If it gets stuck, don't keep jamming on it. You can take your oboe apart, and there's the tail, and you can pull it back if, if that becomes necessary. You won't be able to force it through if it's stuck in there. It'll just get jammed really, really badly and you have to send it to the shop. Okay, so that's a silk swab. If you have a cotton swab, and you can tell the difference, cotton is going to be much, much thicker. Those are designed to go through one joint at a time, so you have to take your instrument apart. Okay, to take your instrument apart, reverse what you did before. We're going to take the top joint off the bottom joint. And I didn't mention this earlier, but I don't want to hold where all the keys are. I'm going to hold up at the top and at the bottom, and twist and pull. If that's not easy to do, you can put a little, a little cork grease on the tenon, but don't overdo that. Okay, so you take it apart, and then again, if, if you had a, a cotton swab, you would swab the bottom joint, and it'll probably go all the way through the bottom joint. And then, this is very important, with a cotton swab, you're going to swab the top joint separately, in through the bottom of the joint and you're only going to pull it until it gets lodged in there and then you're going to pull it back out the way it came. So do not try and pull a cotton swab all the way through your instrument. Okay, so those are some basics on how to assemble the instrument, how to hold it, what to do with our reeds. In the next video we'll start talking about how to actually prepare to play.